and welcome back to the another episode of daily quiz for IAS prelims 2025. It is 21st October today and in this video we are going to derive the important prelims based questions from these important articles which are mentioned on this slide. You know before we will start our discussion I would like to give you the brief introduction of this initiative so that you will get more connected with the video. You know in this video we discuss three types of questions. The first set of questions which we discuss here are taken from the current affairs. You know what we do? We take up the most important articles from the newspapers. We break them down into the simplest language possible. We derive the prelims based questions from those articles so that it will give the idea how the questions could be asked from these news articles with respect to the prelims exam. And after discussing that, we will discuss the another set of questions which we derive from the static portion. As right now we are discussing the Indian polity and in it we are discussing fundamental rights. And today we are going to derive a preliminary based question from Article 24. After discussing this, after, after discussing this uh, Article 24, we will derive a preliminary based question from it and give the idea how the question can be asked from the static portion like uh, like these fundamental rights like these articles after discussing these uh, questions with respect to the current affairs topics and the static portion we will shift to the last part of our discussion in which we will discuss few previous year questions we will try to find out the ways and methods by which we can solve these questions and also we will try to find out the habit of UPSC asking the same question in different styles. We'll try to uh, grab uh, that information, you know, as much as possible. We'll, uh, we will see the pattern and we will try to implement this knowledge in the upcoming exam. So in nutshell, this is all about this video, what we discuss here. Uh, three types of questions based on current affairs, based on static portion and based on previous year questions. Now before we will start our discussion, I would like to request you a few things. After that we will start it, we will sol start solving the questions. First of all, please do watch the full video. It is going to be very much interesting for you and very much important for you at the same time. You know why? Because the source which we use for these questions is the same source which the UPSC uses for framing your newspapers, for framing your question papers. So it is very much, uh, uh, you know, good or we can say it is very much important for you to watch the video to be on the safer side you know who knows maybe money statements which we discuss here may coincide with the questions which they are going to ask because the source is same or at least money concepts will be the same or at least maybe a money a question can come in the same way you know a question may coincide so being on the safer side it is better for you to watch the full video trust me this video is worthy to watch it is going to help you in many ways. And second thing, if you are watching this video, then please do note down these questions which we are going to discuss here. You know, they are going to be very much important for you. You know, when your exams would be near, you would want to revise the, revise the current affairs that time. But the time won't permit you because the time is very much limited and you have to revise the current affairs of the whole year. But if you have these questions with you at that time, you would just revise the questions these questions will definitely connect you with the current affairs of the year. So it will, you know, definitely help you in your cause in preparing, in clearing your UPSC exam, UPSC prelims exam. After that, I would again like to request you guys, please do, please do subscribe the channel and share it with your friends so that they may also get benefited from this initiative. And please do write in the comments, uh, what do you feel about the video? Why do we need to improve? What else should we bring for you? Please appreciate us if you are doing if we are doing the good work. If we are lacking somewhere, please do write in the comments, criticize us, but be a little respectful in that. So with this, let us have a look at the topics from where we had taken today's questions. Let us get, get the brief uh, gist of the news articles today. Then we will start solving the questions. It won't take more than five minutes. So the first article which is in news is about the climate finance to developing world. So why this article is in the news because very soon COP29 summit all set to be held at Baku, Azerbaijan by under UNFCCC. So you know this is going to be very much interesting what we are going to discuss, what the countries are going to discuss in this COP29 summit. You know 
in you know right now the condition of the globe is very different global warming is happening and the contribution of the global warming is due to the emissions from the industries from the uh, from the automobiles from different by the burning of fossil fuels so with respect to that the countries had came together to discuss what can be done to reduce those global uh, you know reduce those global emissions so with respect to that countries had you know what countries try to do they uh, right now they try to cut down the fossil fuels but here comes the concept of how the developed nations would had done and what developing and underdeveloped nation will do with respect to it you know if we look at the developed nations they had already consumed the global you know consumed the fossil fuels to its highest level so because of that only they are developed now but if we look at at the same time if we look at the developing and underdeveloped countries they have not consumed that much and but the burden of reducing the fossil fuels is equally on them so then came the different countries together like minded countries together and they said that this is not the right way that we will uh, every country will participate in it in a similar way so as you know what they wanted to express here that you know developed countries they had consumed more their per capita consumption is more as compared to the developing and underdeveloped countries so it is not right that how much the developed countries will contribute in curbing the emissions same would be contributed by the underdeveloped and uh, developing countries so with respect to that then came the concept of the you know then came the concept of that uh, you know equal the concept of common but differentiated principle that you know it is the you know every country has to contribute in it but how the countries would contribute it would depend upon their states how they had you know used it for example developed country according to them the developed countries need to contribute more so that the damage they had done since the centuries that would be compensated it is not the developing countries which have done this damage and also if we look at the impact of the global warming it is more felt by the developing and underdeveloped countries rather than the developed countries because they have the technology to cope with that but the uh, underdeveloped and developing countries they don't have that much technology so the impact of the global warming is felt by them so with respect to this uh, under this concept of uh, the common but differentiated responsibility we have this uh, climate finance concept under the 2009 copenhagen accord in which the developed countries will have to contribute 100 billion dollars to global south countries so that they will curb this Uh, this uh, climate emissions they will curb uh, they will help the global south countries or we can say developed uh, developing or underdeveloped countries to curb the global emissions so with respect to this this is in nutshell about the article climate finance to developing countries i hope you had got the basic gist of the article with respect to this we will solve a preliminary based question and get more idea about that after that there is another article it is about the atlantic uh, you know it is about atlantic uh, hurricane Uh, atlantic hurry ocean hurricane so what we need to know about this you know usually there was a trend which was understood by the people whenever it is in north america in north atlantic whenever there the you know the hurricanes would be whenever there is you know whenever there is el nino here in the in the central pacific the hurricanes would be subdued or we can say we can see lesser hurricanes in the north atlantic for example if there are uh, the you know ocean temperatures you know are lesser or we can say the, the ocean temperatures are cooler or we can say it is el nino year then the hurricanes in the atlantic or at north atlantic would be lesser the hurricanes would be subdued and uh, and to, and similarly if there are the, it is la nina year that the uh, central pacific waters are warmer than the hurricanes in the atlantic ocean a north atlantic ocean would be more so this was the basic understanding so on this knowledge the you know the organizations would frame the uh, you know they will forecast the when the hurricanes would come or what would be the intensity of that how many hurricanes would come so but unfortunately from last two years this uh, with respect this the prediction of the uh, of the forecasters has failed because even though there was la nina or we can say el nino years but the uh, you know hurricanes which came in this region were very much normal so with respect to this the, the the organizations or we can say world does not know the 
why the proper reason why this has happened why their predictions has failed why this principle has failed that when there is a el nino year uh, you know that there, there would be higher uh, higher uh, hurricanes in the atlantic ocean or la nina there would be lesser hurricanes in the atlantic ocean they don't understand why this uh, principle has failed so with respect to this the india should also know that what the need of the better understanding of the climate um, better understanding of the climate the impact of the global warming how the global warming has impacted these el nino cycles la nina cycles how it ha- it is impacting the hurricanes too how it is impacting the cyclones in the world too so with respect this india does need to have the better forecasting when the when you know very very well localized forecasting we had recently discussed how india has brought up the mission mosam with respect to the localized forecasting similarly india should de- india should have better developed forecasting with respect to ocean waters how the temperatures are impacting the these uh, global you know how temperatures are impacting these global hurricanes or cyclones and also one thing which was interesting in it that even though the numbers uh, the numbers you know what has changed the numbers has remained the same the numbers the cyclones used come that has remained the same but what has changed changed is the intensity the in- intensity has changed because of the impact of the global warming on the oceans so this is in nutshell what we had seen in article in this article we saw that usually what we used to find out that whenever there was el nino year the hurricanes would be lesser in number in atlantic ocean and whenever there was a la nina year the hurricanes would be more but from last few years we had seen that this prediction is failing because we had seen the constant number of hurricanes in this region but what has changed is the intensity and why intensity has changed because of the global warming because of the more pressure more moisture present for the cyclones so this is in nutshell what we get from this article after that there is another article it is written by shashi tharoor sir which he wrote india's choice in world becoming bipolar he actually defines the right now the indian right now the world's conditions it is not similar to that of the cold war it is not he is examining the right uh, world's position you know condition right now as it was before 1990s he according to him it is not the cold war 2.0 because in cold war it was clear rivalry between the two global powers ussr and usa they were very much independent of each other there was huge competition between the two countries they were involved in the space race they were involved in the nuclear race there was ideological conflict one was the communist country another was the capitalist they had they were very much independent of each other and they were always focused on targeting each other but if we look at right now the global by power right now the india us and china they, it is not same like that of the cold war china and us are very much similar you know are very much dependent on each other they are not disconnected they are very much connected to each other they are depend, dependent on each other the you know we can see that how us is the biggest investor in china china is the biggest owner of us treasury bonds so you know we can't say that according to the shashi tharoor sir he says that we can't say that it is similar as it was it is not similar as it was in uh, in the cold war era because they were very much anti each other they were very much uh, against each other they were always involved in uh, defaming each other but right now these countries they are very much dependent on each other as we saw that us is the highest investor in china and china uh, china is the biggest owner of us treasury bonds and also students from the two countries are uh, studying in each other con- colleges they are studying uh, the students from china are studying in uh, us and students from uh, us are studying in chinese universities so there is huge cooperation between the countries and also you know us is very much mindful of the china's role in the indo pacific how china has established its place Uh, its leadership in the indo pacific us very much knows that so right now what uh, india should do with respect to that according to the author he tries to say that india should not totally align with one set of the power so especially like right now we saw that how the quad summit was held how the world is seeing it as the anti china organ military organization but how india should always uh, india has always opted for that it is not anti china or it is not nato in asia it is just an informal organization to secure the indo pacific to have the 
good business in indo pacific so it, according to the author according to shashi tharoor sir that india should not look this matter as a bipolar matter india should not look this matter as the you know as the uh, as the cold war era 2.0 but india should equally communicate with both the countries right now we can't afford uh, china to uh, you know be anti india you know we can't afford china's uh, uh, you know uh, china's invasion or we can say we can't afford china's frustration on us uh, you know the as china sees the malabar or we can say as uh, uh, you know god exercise god uh, organization as the nato in uh, in, uh, in indo pacific but still if china is going to retaliate against any country it would most probably retaliate against india because we share our borders and we cannot afford that so with respect to that it is better for india to maintain this gap maintain maintain this professional gap and collaborate with every country in a very peaceful manner so this is what this article actually tries to highlight here how india's approach should be in balancing china and the west especially the countries of the quad after this there was another uh, article in the news which is about the terror attack in kashmir you know in the gandarbal uh, region at uh, zard more tunnel there was a terror attack against the non locals unfortunately some non locals were killed there and we had seen this trend increasing after the abrogation of article 370 as the militants in kashmir they are attacking these uh, non local locals continuously so that what i believe personally is to put that fear in the non locals to not uh, settle in the kashmir region so with respect to this we need to know what this zard more tunnel is you know about zard more tunnel it connects the srinagar with the with the sonmarg region which finally connects with which sonmarg then finally connects uh, srinagar to uh, leh ladakh region so this zard more uh, tunnel becomes very much important for our prelims exam after that there was another article it is about the malabar naval exercise you know it was uh, conducted in bay of bengal involving quad countries india US, australia japan and usa you know and this is what we need to know about it and with respect to this we will solve a preliminary based question and get more idea about that after that there was another article in the news it is about the ponta delgada we should know where this place is located in it is located in the azores islands of the portugal so it becomes important for us as we saw the picture of two dolphins in the ocean there in the sea there so it becomes important for us it was mentioned in the news article today after that there is another uh, article actually this article was in yesterday's newspaper it is about you know india to india seeking to uh, india to seek certificate from who for eliminating kala azar here we need to know what this kala azar is and what is the uh, way you will get this certificate of elimination elimination um, elimination you know about kala azar we should know about this disease bangladesh became the first country to eliminate kala azar in fact it is the first country in the world to eliminate the kala azar you know to get this elimination certificate from who you have to have you should have two you should possess two conditions first you should uh, report under one case per 10000 population of kala azar and also for consecutive 3 years for consecutive 3 years you should report only one under one case per 10000 and also you should have a system to deal with it you should have a high technology and uh, a improved system if you have any patient of have, if you you find any patient with this kala azar disease you should have a system to deal with that if you possess these two conditions the first one the most important under one case per 10000 for consecutive 3 years then you will be granted the elimination certificate for kala azar and india is uh, uh, from last two years they they are find you know they are continuously working on this and we are getting under one case per 10000 from last two years so with respect to that india will apply for the elimination certificate of the kala azar under who about uh, kala azar itself it is uh, a, a protozoan parasite you know it, it leads to discoloration of the skin it is a separate you know the main source of separating the kala azar is sand flies infected female sand flies and also it is the second deadliest parasite disease after malaria infection can affect its infection can affect bone marrow spleen and liver spleen and liver so this is basic information about it which you need to know with respect to this we will solve a prelims based question and get more idea about it so with this we complete our news articles discussion i hope you had got 
best info, you know, you had got the basic information about what was in the news today. You know, I hope that I hope you had got some clarity in the mind. Now with this information, we'll try to solve the preliminary based questions and get more idea about it. Let's go move to the first question, which, which we need to discuss today. Here the first question says, which of the following statements regarding the Copenhagen Accord and its implications for climate finance, climate finance is are correct. You know, Copenhagen Accord 2009, why we discussed it, we discussed it with respect to the climate finance, what is the responsibility of the developed countries on developing and underdeveloped countries with respect to the elimination of, uh, of you know, elimination of, uh, you know, fossil fuels, or we can say with, the, with respect to the uh, reducing the global temperatures. So first statement, the Copenhagen Accord established a framework for developed countries to provide financial assistance to developing countries for climate mitigation and adoption. adaptation, adaptation 100% correct. Second, the accord mandated a specific annual finance target over of 100 billion to be raised by 2020 for climate related initiatives, 100% correct. Third, the commitment made under the Copenhagen Accord are legally binding for all the participating countries. No, it is not legally binding on the all the participating countries. So with respect to this question, the correct statements are statement one and statement two only. With this, I hope you had got the basic understanding of the Copenhagen Accord and also you had got the basic understanding of the role of the developed and developing countries, how they are differentiated with respect to the curbing the global emissions, reducing the global temperatures. With this, let's move to the another question and try to solve that. Here the question is, we consider the following statements regarding the impact of La Nina and El Nino on Atlantic Ocean hurricanes. First statement, La Nina conditions generally lead to increased hurricane activity in the Atlantic uh, Ocean. La Nina, 100% correct. Uh, it is the, you know, the water temperatures are increased and this leads to the uh, increased hurricane activity in the Atlantic Ocean. Second, El Nino events are associated with cooler ocean temperatures which suppress hurricane formation in the Atlantic, 100% correct. Third, the interaction between the Atlantic Ocean and the Central Pacific climate patterns have no significant effect on hurricane trajectories. No, it is totally incorrect. They have the significant impact on the hurricane trajectories. So with respect to this question, the correct statements are statement one and two only. And from the code given below, the correct code is option A. With this, let's move to the another question and try to solve that. Here the question is direct as we discussed it in the news uh, analysis, uh, you know, in the first slide. It says that more tunnel recently seen in news is being constructed in which state duty. Is it uh, Himachal Pradesh? No. Is it Uttarakhand? No. Is it Ladakh? No. It is definitely Jammu and Kashmir. It connects Srinagar region to the Sonmarg region, which finally connects Srinagar to the uh, Ladakh region. So with respect to this question, the correct statement is option C. With this, let's move to the another question and try to solve. Here the question is, is about the Malabar naval exercise. Let's see what does the question say. The Malabar exercise involves the navies of India, the United States, Japan and Australia, correct? Second statement, the exercise aims to enhance maritime security, interoperability and humanitarian assistance operations, correct? Third, the Malabar exercise has been conducted and since its inception in 1992, correct? With respect to this question, all the three statements are correct and from the code again below, the correct code would be option D. One thing we need to know about the Malabar exercise in 1992, it was actually a bilateral exercise between India and US. But in 2007, India wanted to add the Japan and, and Australia, but because of the retaliation from the China, India did not let them in. But after 2014, India first allowed uh, Japan to be the part and in 2020, India allowed Australia to be the part of the Malabar exercise. From 2020 onwards, it became the multilateral exercise. So with respect to this question, uh, the correct statement is option D. With this, let us move to the another question and try to solve it. Here the question is directly on the Ponta Delgada, recently seen in news, is located in which country? Is it in Brazil? No. Is it in Chile? No. Is it in Mexico? No. It is, is it in Portugal? Yes, 100% correct. Portugal is the correct statement with respect to this. It is in the Azores Islands of the Portugal. So with this, let's move to the last question with current affairs. It is based on the Kala Azar. Let us see what the question says. Here the question says, which of the following statements regarding Kala Azar, which is also known as Viscaral Leshmanesis, is our correct first statement. Kala Azar is primarily transmitted through the bite of the infected female 
in anopheles mosquitoes totally in, incorrect it is uh, primarily transmitted through the bite of the infected female sand flies so first statement is incorrect second statement it is characterized by prolonged uh, fever weight loss and splenomegaly 100% correct third the disease is endemic in several regions of india particularly in the states of bihar and west bengal correct so with respect to this question the correct statements are uh, statement 2 and statement 3 and from the code given below the correct code is option b with this we had completed the question with respect to the current affairs now let us shift our approach towards the static portion topic today which is article 24 let us solve a question on article 24 itself and get the idea how the question can be asked from such articles here the question says which of the following statements regarding the article 24 of the indian constitution is are correct first statement article 24 prohibits the employment of children below the age of 14 years in factories and hazardous employment are not correct this is what the article 24 is about second statement is part of the fundamental rights enshrined in part 3 of the constitution correct 100 percent correct third the enforcement of article 24 is subjected to the direct principles of state policy no it is totally incorrect as it is a fundamental right, it is not subjected to direct uh, principles of the state policy. So with respect to this question, the correct statements are option 1 and 2. So what do we need to know from this article? It prohibits the employment of children below the age of 14 years in factories and hazardous employment. So with this, let's move to the last part of our discussion by solving the previous year questions. Let's find what we get. Let's see what we can get from those questions. Here the first question. It says, where was the first session of the Indian National Congress held in December 9, 1885? Was it in Ahmedabad? No. Was it in Calcutta? No. Was it in Delhi? No. It was in Bombay. So the first session of the Indian National Congress was held in December 1885 in Bombay. So with this, let's move to the last question of today's discussion. It says, who among the following wrote the poem Subhe Azadi, the morning of freedom, translated in uh, English in Urdu we call it Subhe Azadi. Is it uh, sah is it uh, written by Sahir Lughiyami? No. Is it written by Muhammad Iqbal? No. Is it written by Mulana Abul Kalam Azad? No. Is it written by Faiz Ahmed Faiz? Hundred percent correct. So with this we had completed today's discussion with respect to the daily quiz. You know the aim of this video is to bring up the most important articles which are relevant for your exam and derive the preliminary basic questions from them so i hope we did our best to bring out the most important articles you know if we are lacking somewhere please do write in the comments so that we can bring that thing for you so that you will you will get more prepared with respect to your preparation with respect to your exams and please do write in the comments uh, why do uh, please do appreciate us if we are doing good work if we are lacking anything, do, do criticize us in the comments. And please do subscribe the channel and share with your friends. Thank you for staying with me. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.